Um, so, uh, you guys remember what you did last week? Yeah. Debate. Debate. Remember that? Huh? That closing, though. Know. Closing. You weren't here for the debate. No, I wasn't. Did you hear how she closed it up? What? Yeah. Give you run for your money, Justin. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so today what Rob asked me to do is just kind of, um, like, do a broad overview of everything and just kind of sum it up as to what you guys have been learning and maybe just uh, address like the heavy like like the heavy verses and just kind of see where the uh, the arguments um, where the strongest points are and maybe where their weakest points are so just so we can kind of get an idea and then I think that's going to be the end of it I did a personal study on it so if you actually want a copy of this you can have it. It's, it's just a light study. I don't want to pass it out to everyone because I know it's just going to end up on the floor. So whoever wants one. All right, so what this addresses is kind of like the different theories that exist behind it. So I want to address the ones that um, aren't really that popular but still exist. So let's, let's, let's start there. Okay, so if you have the paper, it's on page 2. Um, in the back, and you'll see that they're the, the one, two, ones at two at the bottom, right? So, uh, but before we start, let's go ahead and uh, start with a word of prayer. So, all right. So, uh, the first theory I'll address is the uh, is the created during um, creation theory of the creation of Satan. Genesis one one says what? The the heavens and the earth. Jeez, really? Come on. In the beginning, what? Okay. okay. So in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, right? And then what does verse 2 say? Anybody know that? Yes. What does it say? Okay. Uh, thank you for reading it. I don't know what you're talking about. So 1, 2, right? So this theory says that Satan was created somewhere between verse 1 in verse 2. Okay, it, I, I believe it's called the Stake Bible by a guy with the last name, his last name was Stake. S-T-A-K-E. Um, he theorized, and I believe it's him, theorized that, that actually Satan was created somewhere between the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And in verse 2, and the earth was formless and without void. So he, what he's saying is that there is a gap there that exists now, why would he say this? Why would he say this? When God creates, what does he create? How does he create things? Out of nothing. But how, what are they? When he's finished, what does he call them? Perfect. Perfect, Perfect mm -hmm. right? So if in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then we go to verse 2 and it was formless, what does formless mean? Just nothing. Dis void, disorder. Okay, it's just the opposite of... Perfect, right? So it's imperfect. imperfect. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes? So if it's formless and without void, then it's imperfect. So if God created and it's perfect, and then verse 2, it's formless and it's imperfect, then the theory states or indicates that something must have happened here. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Something must have happened here. And the theory states that they believe that Satan was created somewhere in this area. Yes? Okay, that's just a theory, okay? That's a weird theory. Does anybody like the theory? No. No? Well, I just kind of like it. <laughs> I don't completely believe it, but I like it. It was just a lot of uh, assumptions. It's a lot, a lot of theorizing, of, yeah. A lot of theorizing, a lot of... Uh, yeah. It's a lot of... Yeah, that's called uh, conjecture. That is correct. There's a lot of theory behind it. Okay. Now, if you don't like that one, then you're heckin' not gonna like the next one. Okay. So the next one states, okay, and this is Jerson's favorite for a reason. Last time we spoke about it. The second, the other one states that Adam created Satan. Okay. <laughs> this is a theory. Okay. So if you have a paper, here's what it says: Satan, Lucifer, sent to Earth to care for Adam and Eve. So his actual job was to care for Adam and Eve. What God would, did with creation is believe that what he did was just so amazing, and, he, and Satan couldn't believe that he gave man that authority. So therefore, Satan is jealous of what God is allowing man to have authority over. 
So therefore, he dominates as he tries to take over Adam. And in the moment that Adam obeys him, which is contrary to what he him obeying God, Satan is created in the obedience of Satan. By Adam. It's a theory, okay? It's, I'm just throwing it out there. That's one of the theories. Does anybody like that one? There, there's no biblical basis for it. So, like... <laughs> This is pretty as much as I can tell you. So why is that kind of like, why, why could that be a theory? Well, because anything that goes against the will of God is sin. So if Adam actually listened to Satan instead of God or Lucifer, then therefore sin began and the origin of Satan begins there. By the obedience of Adam to Satan. Okay, that's theory number two. All right, questions? Does anybody like that one? No? I think David kind of likes it. <laughs> All right, good. All right, so now we go to the age-old question of, or the age-old theory of Satan is a fallen angel. How many of you believe that Satan is a fallen angel? Jerson? Yeah, fallen? Fallen, yes. Fallen. Anyone else? You don't know? No? You don't know either? Ah, okay. So, is this what you were going to speak about? I was just going to comment on oh, that. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead and take over this part. If you want. Right now? Yeah. No, you, you go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, it's believed that Satan lived in heaven. He was amongst the angels. He ushered in, if we go to Isaiah 14.2, go to Isaiah 14.2 with me. I'm sorry, 1412. If anybody have it, you can read it. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Okay. So believe that he, him, oh, what, what is it? Oh, fallen from heaven, oh, morning star, son of the dawn, meaning son of the dawn means the light that comes at dawn. It's when it issues in or it comes on. I'm sorry, or it, it, the dawn or the light of the dawn begins. So he's considered to be son of the morning star. So he's considered Lucifer, which also means light or son of light. Satan means adversary in Hebrew. The, worst, the word Satan was first used in 1 Chronicles 21.1, so it wasn't actually used in the beginning. The different names of Satan have been dragon, ancient serpent, serpent of old, tempter of, of Abaddon, Beelzebub, Baal, god of this world, prince of this world, the father of lies. Now, theory states that he was casted out of heaven for what reason, Jerson? Rebelling, trying to usurp God's place. So he's trying to take God's place. So he therefore um, is casted out of heaven for trying to take God's place. Now, one of the strong arguments for this, we can go to Matthew chapter 25. Oh, no, I don't think it's this one. But let's go to Matthew 25. But that's, I don't know why I have that one. Well, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. So go ahead and read it. It says, um, oh, then, I'm in the wrong verse. Go ahead. then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh. Oh. So 2541, it's devil, and it's not just devil by himself. It's devil and his angels. angels. Why would he call them angels? Oh, well, uh, jo uh, Josh will later argue that for you. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So he's not alone. There are demons with him. If we look at Luke, well, we look at Jesus. He casts out demons. We know that he Satan also disguises as angels. I have an exclamation mark next to Jude, which means we have to read that one. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jude 
Jude 1, 5 and 6. Whoever has it, please read it. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels, who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains, under darkness, for the judgment of the great day. Right, so these are good arguments for this verse, right? These are the, like, the arguments that the, the dictator can... Um, uh, in which the theory or the belief that he was a fallen angel come from. One, that it was prepared for him since the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, two, that uh, like what we just read right now, it's Satan and his angels. Like mm -hmm. apparently, see, <sighs> I'll get into that a little bit. All right. Um, what else do we have? Revelation 12, 9 is the other one. Uh, let's go ahead and read that one. So read that one for me. Revelation 12, 9. <laughs> So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay. All right, so these are the verses for the belief of the fallen, the fallen angel. Okay, the, the strong verses are obviously, we obviously know, like, at least for this one, we actually know specifically what he's talking about. Usually the verses of refuge or the strong verses that have to do with this particular belief are the ones where I have verses of refuge, Isaiah 14, 12, falling from heaven, um, where it says passages refer to Lucifer, um, Ezekiel, um, you were in Eden and calls him a sheriff. Okay, well, these are the verses that it's belief or the belief states that it's referring to Satan. But if you argue the point, you believe that it's not referring to Satan, but that's, like, we're not arguing today, we're just reiterating what the belief is. Um, what else do I have? Mm, and I think that's all I have for this. Is there something I'm missing, uh, Jerson, that you want to talk about or argue with this one? Um, yes, but uh, I'd rather do it after, uh, at the end of the class. Okay. All right. And I have 8.44... John 8, 44 says, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holy to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar, a liar, a father of lies. And let's go to 2 Peter together. That'll be the last one we read. 2 Peter 2, 4. Somebody want to read it? It says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved for judgment. Okay. So, I mean, it's good arguments, right? Like, I mean, the heck of them, especially Second Peter. I really like Second Peter. Like, it's a really good um, uh, indicator of, of, of what he's, of, of, of this particular belief, that he is a fallen angel, that he is... At some point, what, what most of these in, most of these verses indicates is that angels have one thing, and that's the argument that is implied from this, is that angels have one thing. And this is where we fall into a problem, I believe. Is that at some point, it seems as though when they sin, when they sin, as though angels had free will. Because if they sin, then therefore they had a choice to sin. Yes? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of what it's implying, right? But now, uh, at least, I don't know, me personally, I, I don't believe now that angels have free will anymore or don't have any. Now, there's a theory that goes with this verse, with, with this belief. Okay? Um, it's theorized that the angel, that Satan was a fallen angel... And what that indicates, or what people believe, is that at some point, angels have free will. But when this happened, free will was taken away. 
and therefore angels no longer have free will. That's kind of in addition to the theory. Okay, it, it's not completely. This is what it is. But if you believe that angels are uh, Satan was a fallen angel, then you have to believe that angels have free will. Yes. Yes. Okay. Free will. Now, but the argument comes in also is: Do we believe that angels have free will now? Yes. You, you believe they do? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not everyone does. But if you believe that angels have free will now, then the argument also comes in, which was what Javier argued is, can it happen again? And more angels rebel. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, it's just kind of questions you can ask about this theory, right? I'm not trying to pick it apart. I'm just things you can ask. There are certain things with certain, um, certain theories, such as this one, that imply certain things. And, and this is where we kind of fall into a bit of a problem. If we look at this particular theory, then we have, we, we, it implies that angels have free will. If angels have free will, then it also implies that it could possibly happen again. Just in theory. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if there's free will and angels have it, okay, and they choose, then does that also mean that in the dwelling of where God lives, something imperfect occurred in God's dwelling. I think these are the questions we have to ask. Or these are the questions that we have to address. So where God lives in his perfect place of, I don't even know how to call it. Holiness. Perfect holiness and of dwelling where the angels live with him. Something imperfect or unholy occurred. I'm, really, like it, that's what we're saying. Okay, yes. that's exactly what we're saying. Now, the, oh, I don't want to get into the arguments, okay? Because I know it's it's in part it's like yes, something evil occurred, but what happened is God turned His back while it occurred, and then it happened. He turned around and He's like, oh my gosh, like right. So that's just different arguments that I, I I've heard that. <laughs> oh, that's, that's trying to explain something. That's right. And that, yeah, so we have to be able, if you believe that Satan was a fallen angel, then we have to be able to answer certain questions that technically you know, can only be theorized. Not really like, well, th this is exactly what it is. Like, you can't answer that. So, uh, one, can it happen again? Two, where God lives, something completely imperfect occurred, and God did God not have control over it? Uh, I know where the argument goes. Okay, so those are the questions you got to be ready to ask. So when you're arguing, you really have to also be able to answer the, what your argument implies. Okay, and if your argument implies these things, then you should be able to answer those questions if you can, or at least have an answer for them. Okay? Do you think you guys have an answer for it, other than Jersey? For the fallen angel theory? Homer? What was the question? Paul and Angel, right? That's what you believe? Okay. So tell me about this. Can it happen again? No. Huh? It can happen again. Okay. So in your mind, it can happen again. So where God lives perfectly, like someone can rebel again. It can happen before. Okay. And if you accept it, then hey, like then that's, that's your answer. All right. So... It can happen again. No, I'm cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Josh. So, the way I look at it is once we all perish, if it can happen, then if it can happen for the angels again, then it can definitely happen to us. But do we have the free will that the angels have up in heaven? In eternity, you mean? Yeah, in eternity. Well, according to this theory, we, yeah. will, all, we will have the same free will. So, we can rebel against God. But we're going to be given a new... I mean, with that mentality, you're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the implications of this theory, okay? Now, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying they're good. I'm not saying anything about it. I'm just saying these are the questions that need to be answered. And in reality, finding an answer isn't as easy as you think. Now, you might theorize or we might think like this is what it is. And there's some great answers out there. But I think these are the questions that need to be asked. And these are the questions where, where the argument um, has some some holes in it, okay? Anything else that I'm missing, Tris, about this one that I might be missing? 
I didn't do no, ar- good I didn't do arguments on this. I should have arguments against. Okay. All right. Any questions? Mm-hmm. No. All right. So the next one is God created Satan. All right. Satan was created on purpose for evil. That was his uh, end goal in life. Well, that was it. Does anyone believe this one? Which one? The second one. The last one. Page three. He was created. He was created. Satan was created. God created Satan. As Satan. Does anyone? Okay. One brain saw. Mm-hmm. Marisol still doesn't know. Okay. All right. The strong arguments for this one are. Jerson, uh, read. Uh, Marisol, give me Colossians 1 16, 17. And Jerson, give me Jude 1 3 to 9. Okay. And uh, Dave, give me Isaiah 45, 7. For, him, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. What does that mean, so? He created it all. What is all? Everything. Everything where? That is, that is uh, visible and invisible in heaven and on earth. Okay. So wh- how, why is this a good verse for those who believe in this theory? Because then he had to be created by God. God okay. created all. <laughs> so according to this verse, and okay, and this is, I'm, I'm doing this, okay? Um... God's beginning, okay? Okay? If, if such a thing existed, right? Let's pretend that I always do God as a son. All right, so if this is God, right? And like, this is this is the beginning of God. Right. God has no beginning, okay? Let's put that out there. What exists before him? Nothing. Nothing. There, is, there is no before him. No. Right. I, I said that just, okay? I did this. Are we pretending? Well, we're pretending God has a beginning. Okay. okay. We're pretending God. We're pretending God has a beginning. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. What exists before him? Nothing. Nothing. What does that mean, though? <clears throat> like, what? What exactly does that mean? It's a very hard question to answer, but I want you to really try to think about what it is I'm, I'm saying. Here. It means there would be no reality itself. Um, there is. With nothing. No. Like I mean, like there's not, not even, even black space. You can't even say black space because black is something. It's uh-huh. black. Like right. So, our minds cannot comprehend what nothing is. Okay. Like a void. But even a void. But even a void has right. It's it's black. It's, it's like void. wow, this is a void. Like yeah. not even that. Okay. So it's just nothing. There's just and what does that look like? I have no idea. So, I don't. So, so if nothing exists, so Colossians says everything that came. <coughs> After he was created. Okay, whose fault is it? His. His. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Alright. And then Jude says what? First thing. Three to nine? Yeah, one, three to nine. It says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep the proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains and under darkness for the judgment of the great day as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, 
dare not bring against them a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. I don't even know why I put that in there, but that was uh-huh. an awesome verse. Like, I just shouldn't remember why. Um, there is a obviously we know the archangel Michael and 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 and, and, and Satan, right? It was the battle over Moses. <clears throat> Oof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm in my head. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why I put that verse in. Okay. But, um, Amos, everyone go to Amos 3.6. This is this is the one I have labeled under Uwe in your papers. Okay? Amos 3.6. Uh, are you sure it's this one? Amos 3.6? Yeah. Did I not get that right? Oh, I guess. What's it say? It says, if a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in a city, will not the Lord have done it? I think other person says if there is evil yeah. in a city, yeah. will not the Lord have done right. it? Right, will the Lord have done it? Yeah. And that's one of the verses I, I read. And also Isaiah Isaiah 45, or 45, 7 is the one where God says, where Isaiah says, I cause darkness and I cause yeah. calamity or I cause evil. So he is the cause of certain things. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 3 to 5 says, just, just listen. Uh, Deuteronomy. Oh, I thought I had it. Deuteronomy what? Thirty-two, three to five. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the Rock. He, his work is perfect. For all his ways are justice. A good, a God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is He. They have corrupted themselves. They are not his children because of their blemish, a, a perverse and crooked generation. Yeah. So uh, let my teachers fall like rain and the words ascend like dew, like the showers of new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord, and praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect or are perfect uh, in all of his ways are just a faithful God who does no wrong upright and he just as he is. And five says they have acted corruptly toward him to shape their no longer his children, but a warped and crooked generation. In this way, do you repay the Lord of foolish, unwise people? He is not your father, your creator, who has, who made you and formed you, okay? So again, it, it's talking about the corruption that exists within the person or exists actually within the people. So uh, it's, ah, man, like, um, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to get to, to uh, forget how to, try how to put this together. But let, let me, let me just, Summarize everything that I'm trying to say. Okay, so it's believed that in Isaiah 45 says that God created evil. It's Him who started evil. Colossians says that nothing exists before Him, and He is responsible for all things. So from here on on, He is responsible for everything that exists. So therefore, if everything, if nothing existed before Him, then everything that exists exists because of Him. So then the argument is: Does Satan exist because God created him that way, or does God ex- or does Satan exist because because he decided to rebel. But if God is in control of all things, then how can we say that the, the only thing that wasn't in his control was Satan? Especially his place of dwelling. Now, it's the same argument. If God's place of dwelling is completely perfect and something happens in his dwelling, then God is no longer in control. So if God is in, not in control in his own home, then what does that say about God? Is he perfect? Oh. Yeah. If God, is not in control. if God is not in control, right? So, so if if to me personally, or maybe I shouldn't have said that, but personally, I think that if God created him, he created him for a purpose, for his purpose in the way that he exists. Mm-hmm. Now here's here's what this implies. Okay. Now this also implies that Satan is eternally punished, even though he is created that way. Is that fair? No, no, that's not fair. 
if God created Satan the way that he is, and then in the end he punishes him eternally for being who he created him to be, then what does that imply about God? Is he fair? He's unjust. He's unjust. These are the holes in this theory. What does this say about God? Is God a just God if he created him that way and then punishes him? Uh, and I think that's um, a lot of very wicked people make that argument about themselves. God created me this way. That way. Yeah. And so they blame God for who they are and what they do. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, it, it's not completely off, though. Right? Like, uh, it's Paul that says, uh, it's Paul who says, um, who is the clay to say something to the potter? Like, right. why did you create me this way, right? Mm -hmm. or, or, or when Moses, Moses goes uh, to God and God says, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Like, right. I will do it. Like, I'm going to harden his heart. Mm -hmm. So then we're talking about a God who's doing something purposefully. Right. And here's where it gets... It, 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 it gets tough. It's God hardened hardens Pharaoh's heart, but then pun then punishes him. So where's the fairness? Where's the justice? Right? Like, what do we do? It's same question with Judas. Right? Was Judas created that way, or was Judas just happened to 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 um? To be the, the, the weakest chain and the weakest link in the chain? Or was he created to fulfill that destiny, to fulfill scripture? And then he gets punished. It's, it's, it's a tough question to ask because of the way that we're going to view God in this, in this sense, or the way that the things that it implies about God. Does that make sense? Yes? So? He, he kind of had a revelation of what he had done and his actions and then went and hung himself. There was some conviction there. Whereas Pharaoh, there was no conviction. I mean... There was none. Yeah, with Pharaoh, there was none. Yeah. So... It, it's very similar. Yeah. Very parallel. But at the end, like, we see, you know, it's kind of a different outcome. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Um, the Greek word, uh, when, when it talks about Judas's uh, repentance, the Greek word is, it, it, more, it, it leans more towards he felt bad about what he had done. Not necessarily a like word of regret. repentance. More of a regret? Yeah, more of a, of like, man, he was a really nice guy. Not like he is the Messiah type repentance. Like as in he had done something wrong, but there was not necessarily a repentance of what he had, of what had actually happened. It, there's a word, there's there's a Greek word that changes the actual meaning of what it meant when he felt bad about the whole thing. And I forget what that word is, but I, I know I've studied this. So it's not like he's completely remorseful of doing it. It's more like he felt bad about it because he, he was just a he was just a good guy. Like Jesus was a good guy. He done nothing wrong. Not like. I repent of my sins or what I've done. It's just, it was, it was a different type of repentance. Yeah. But we know, and, 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 and it states, and, and Paul says, he's like, who is the clay to say something to the potter? The potter can make me any way that I wish. There are vessels made for destruction. Like it's indicated, like the Bible tells us, there are vessels that are made to be destroyed. And that's, that's one of the issues with this theory is that the, Satan was created to be who Satan is so that God's plan can develop. Why still punish it? Like, why? What does it say about God? And I don't know, you and I say that that's horrible, that's bad, that's unjust. In our eyes, in our limited, sinful vision that we have, God's vision and God's plan in his eyes and the way that he sees things perfectly, I'm sure this story plays out a lot different. Go ahead. Could it be that it is from Adam and Eve from when sin occurred, and sin entered into, you know, it became real, and we got free will? 
that it is then the evil within us that then is um, heightened and that we were not necessarily created to do evil but because of sin there is evil within us that we have to compel that we have to fight against you know daily because in the Lord's Prayer where it says lead us not into temptation that means like don't allow us to walk in a way where there is temptation but we wouldn't be tempted unless we were drawn to it okay because of the sin that there's a side of us mm-hmm. from when sin okay. began not before but at the moment that they sinned that it was then that we carried so when you say sin began you mean the origin of sin itself so, I mean, we're just going to get into something crazy, right? <laughs> because, for example, if, if I say evil, what's, wh- wh- what's the first thing that comes to mind? Yeah. Satan. But are, evil and, are Satan and evil separate? Yeah. I mean, technically. Right? So, and this gets even weirder, okay? So, evil exists. That which goes against the will of God already exists. Satan personifies that. Satan, let's take the fallen angel theory. Satan takes the cloak of evil and wraps himself in it. But the cloak already exists. This is evil. Evil exists. But there's no, you guys know what personification is, right? There's no personification of evil. So Satan, in the fallen angel theory, takes on that. He puts on the cloak of evil, and now he is the representation of evil. But evil exists independent of Satan. It's Here, here I'll put it to you this way. Um, it, God makes two trees in the garden. He says, of this one you can eat, and of this one you what? You cannot. Because if you do, what? Consequence. So God has already made a consequence. The not following what he says is, is this. So evil exists already if you wish to walk through that door. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Um, does, does it make sense? Like, am I, am I making sense? Like, so, um, it's, okay, so. So you're kind of saying there's, evil exists, the devil but is it's like, personified, is like evil in action. So it's, it's making saying? it seem as though evil Sorry. is something, which I think is, <sighs> an, if I think it's, it's a misunderstanding Satan, Lucifer, did not see something as evil and say, I'm going to do evil. He just got proud. He just got, you know, he, God says he made him more beautiful than all the rest of the angels. That went like that. There is a mystery in it, but it all went to his head, so to speak. And he thought he could set himself. On this throne, but to him, it wasn't evil. It's just, you know, like there is. Um, he obviously, you know, obviously, I'm gonna. I believe the Bible clearly teaches he had a free will, and but free will, we need to remember, is not the origin of our choices. We use our free will to do what we want there's something behind our will that is the origin and that that is where the mystery is because it is a perfect it is a a perfect realm but within that perfect realm a, a creature who is able to determine for himself what he wants to do somehow determined this is what he wanted to do and it seemed right 
in his own eyes to do it. Yes, but the moment that there's a there's a there's a distinction, like the bat already exists. There's already if you do this, good. If you don't do this, this is the consequence. So without doing it, yeah, but there's there's th no there's no. I mean, it's all uh, at that point we we would have to um, we would have to yeah we'd have to like conjecturize yeah right and, and say that God warned Lucifer that if he did this he would be punished. Well, we don't have to go as far as Lucifer. We can do as Adam and Eve. I know, but we're talking about Lucifer. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking. We know Adam. We know God. Adam and Eve received a warning. Yes. But we, we have to conjecturize to say that Lucifer received some sort of warning. If you rebel against me, then this. But there, that would be just conjecture. We don't, there is nothing to say that. Okay. We just know what we're told, that Satan became proud, and he did try to usurp. Right, but you're right. But without knowing, it already exists. It just wasn't called that. Right. Without knowing, it still exists because he did it. Right. He that was that is the nature of being able to self determine what you do. Right. But even without knowing it, he walked into it, and right. he personified it. Like and now it's personified in him. But be let's say he's I'm gonna, let's say I agree completely with uh -huh. he's a fallen angel. He's a fallen angel. He's perfect. He's light. He ushers in light. He has diamonds all over. Whatever it is. And he's all great, but the moment he decides to, to, to be prideful, he walks into something. Right, he, he, he decides, yeah, he takes a course of action, yeah. Right, and he, that course of action, um, he walks into it, into a consequence, or, or into something that goes against who he was designed to be. Right, uh huh. That is, is this. Sure, yes, uh huh. Right, so the thing. So the idea, the concept, the concept of evil, the existed. idea exists uh -huh. but it didn't without happen. Satan. Right. It's uh, that the abstract idea. It, right. Yeah. I think by very nature, free will defines itself. Like within free will, you, that exists without by, having by a name. By necessity. Right. Exactly. Will, exactly. Free will opens up the possibility of evil right. by necessity. So again, so uh, this is where it's right. So evil is like it's there in concept uh -huh. before abstract. Satan. Right. Uh -huh. It's an abstract. Does idea. that make does that kind of make sense? Right? So then in the concept of fallen angel, he now personifies evil. And he owns it. And he owns it. I don't know how we got on this, but like it's awesome. Well, I know. <laughs> it's just, it's <laughs> yeah, it is. It all has to do with yeah. each other. Yeah. Because then we talk about the origin of evil itself, and then we talk about the origin of Satan, which is I think someone's gonna come in and talk to us about that. He's gonna get a guy to come in. Oh, okay. So yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I know that was a lot, but uh, that's the parts that I love. All right, so let's let's pray us up. Pray us up. Uh, Josh, pray us up.